Well, good morning and welcome to Belong. We're so glad that you are all with us. And as you saw the tribute video this morning, it is Veterans Day weekend. And we want to say a special thank you for all the veterans and the family of veterans. And I think in so many of the families that there's someone that's represented in having been a veteran. And I know Michael's got family members that uh, served, and I do as well, and many of us do, and it's just a day, it's a great day for us to remember the sacrifices that were made, and uh, the one screen that just jumped out to me in the middle of that is that some gave all, and you saw the coffin being pulled out with the American flag draped over it, and I, I can't imagine, and of course our our love and our prayers go out to everyone who is now missing because today stirs up that, that thought of, of a loved one who was killed in action and, and they didn't come home and it just stirs up a lot of emotions. So our thoughts and our prayers are with all of you as we, I, I can't even really say celebrate, but as we are thankful in this month of Thanksgiving for our veterans. This week I saw a quote, and you know how on Facebook it'll pop up things that you did as a memory, and this one popped up from two years ago, and I have it for the screen. This Joyce Meyer said this. She said, Jesus did not die to give us religion. He died so that through faith in him, we could have an intimate relationship with God. And I retwe retweeted, uh, reposted that um, two years ago, and I did it again this year um, because it just it's still just as appropriate and just as relevant today. For us to, to take that in, into our, our mind and be in perspective, but really what jumped out to me was how we're looking at the word faith and how it literally means when we dig down deep into the scripture that it means to be persuaded or have confidence. Look at this. He died so that through being persuaded and confident in him, we could have an intimate relationship with God. And that, that's really what the message of the Bible is, the message of the gospel is, that Jesus and God had this great desire that we would be intimate with them. But can I tell you, it isn't just for the one-on-one. -on -one. It isn't just for me to have that, and I'm okay and great, I'm, I have this great relationship, and that's my core value, and that's my greatest desire for every one of us. But can I suggest to you that there's also, and I, I want to put it like this, a plus one. Have you ever got an invitation to go to a wedding or to an event, and in the thing it says plus one? It means you can bring somebody with you. And, and as I was preparing this message, that thought came up to me of, what if we approached this intimate relationship with God that we have this little tag that says plus one? Someone that you'll take the journey together. Someone that I almost, almost always say at the end, hey, invite somebody, send the URL of the message. It's not about me. It's not about our church. It's not about us becoming more famous. It is about someone else taking that journey with you and that we are better together, especially when we're taking the journey together. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you uh, about this topic and, and it, the title of this message is On Demand, and, and you'll understand, you'll put more of the, the pieces together as I go through. But I, I had this thought about being outside the box, and that's a common um, phrase, it's a common term used when everything, hey, think outside the box, don't just be caught in things. But it really, really, this last week was down and deep inside of me that we put God in a box, or more aptly, we keep God in the box. Now, 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 hold on, don't think I'm a heretic. I don't think that we can attempt to keep God in a box. We can't do anything. But there is this word from God that he says that if we don't ask for it, if we don't ask him for do some, he is limited to what we ask him for. He's not going to just see a need and just automatically go down there and meet it. He's waiting on us. And if we don't ever make this demand on God, on the power of God, on, on the power of prayer, and the, the power of prayer to change things, then we may just be left with circumstances. And God's like, 
if you just let me outside the box, if you would just invite me into your life, if you would just invite me into your, in your day-to-day life, not just in the say a prayer one time and then think you can do it all by yourself for the rest of your life. No, if you can invite God outside of where you keep him, See, some people just look at church on Sunday, and they'll say, hey, I went to church. There's a checkbox on that one. I can now live my life how I want to. Effectively, putting God in a box or like, okay, God, I did you. Uh, I did your little checkbox. Now, I, I, you, you stay over there because now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do all these things. And, hey, God, if you could turn your head a little bit because I don't want you to see what I'm doing over here. Of course, that's ridiculous. But that's what I mean by being out of the box. Can we let God outside of where we try and keep him down in our lame attempts, but because he, he limits his ability and his interaction by what we ask for? Look at this in John chapter 2, a great story, and this is one that most people know. Many people have heard the story, and there's memes that are going along about this. It's pretty funny. On verse 1, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. She's already there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Verse 3, when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, Jesus, there's no wine. And I love the interaction. I love how how Jesus is, and the the way it's translated just cracks me up. Verse 4, and Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with us? What's that got to do with me? I'm a guest here. Somebody didn't plan ahead well enough, and and what's that got to do with me? And he continues on to says, my hour has not yet come. See, this is the first miracle of Jesus, meaning he hadn't done anything, but Mary knew that she could put the demand on Jesus to come through. I'm sure as a mother, she was sensing that his time was nearing and it's, it's all about this all time. And she's like, hey, I'm part of this. We, many people think that she was actually part of the planning and you know, somehow she was influential with the family and all this stuff. We, we don't really know. That's, you know, subject, uh, you know, we're just conjecting that. But, but here she is putting a demand and look at what she says. She ignores what Jesus said. Verse five, his mother said to his servant, Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now, can you imagine this Jewish woman, this Jewish mama, coming up there and saying, hey, I need you to get involved with these. He's like, no, it's not my time. And she does it, turns her back, ignores it, tells the servants whatever he says to do, to, and walks away, <laughs> leaving Jesus, sitting there holding the bag, sitting there like, okay, now what are you going to do? Now all eyes are on Jesus, like, okay, she said, do whatever you said. What are we going to do? Verse 6. Now, there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish customs of purification. This is nasty water. This is where they're washing their feet, and each one of them, there's a a process, a series that they're going through. And the first one's really, really nasty, and the last one, next one's less nasty, and all the way down. So it's, your feet are getting more clean as you go through these huge pots. He looks at those, and he goes, it says they contain 20 to 30 gallons each. Jesus said to them, verse 7, fill the water pots with water so that they are filled to the brim. Verse 8, then he said to them, draw out some now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. And I've talked about this many times, but this is such a crazy story that Jesus is telling them to take this nasty water and top it off. So it's still nasty water. And then he says, hey, just get a pitcher down in there and pull some out and take it to the guy in charge. You know they've got to be thinking, this is nasty water. I'm about to get fired or beat or something, and, and, and yet they obeyed. And if you know the rest of the story, of course, we're reading through the book of John through this month. So this is right there at the beginning. You can read the rest of it. They took it to him, and it turned into wine. And, and they said, hey, man, most people save the best for the beginning, and they say the worst for the end when everybody is intoxicated and they don't really know what's going on, but yet you say the best to last. And there's all those crazy memes. I should have had one up on the screen for you where a guy goes to the, to the um, refrigerator. He says, hey, Jesus, can you throw me a bottle of water? And he throws him a bottle of water, and it's a bottle of wine when it hits him. I mean, it's funny memes that are going along there, or vines. And there's so much known about this, but I want you to see that Mary put a demand on Jesus. She put a demand on him, and when he said, no, it's not time, I, what, what's this got to do with me? She still put that demand on him. See, Jesus, Mary ignored Jesus' objection and said, 
Do whatever he tells you to do. See, in James chapter 4, verse 2, the last part of this says, you do not have because you do not ask God. So many times, and that's what I was talking about earlier about keeping God in a box that we don't have. We don't involve God that, hey, God, I've got this situation and I don't know what to do. So, Lord, I, I, I didn't even ask you about it. You don't have because you don't ask. It goes on to say in the next part of that verse, which I didn't put on here, that sometimes you don't have because you're asking the wrong thing. Look in Mark chapter 11. Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you've received them and they will be granted to you. And in 21 days of prayer that we do twice a year, this is one of my favorite verses to quote, and we'll dig down deep in this, but there's three parts of that. Pray, ask, and believe. Pray. That means you got to take time to say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like, bring you into this, and I'm asking you. You say that I don't have because I don't ask. God, I, I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek your face, and then I'm going to come and ask you, God, will you please help me in this situation? Will you help my kids? Will you help my, my parents? Will you help my... And you just fill in the blank of whatever. But look at that next word, and I highlighted it on purpose. Believe. And, and I've kind of been on this kick a little bit lately of learning and drilling down onto the religious terms that I've always taken for granted. The things that I've always looked at and said, oh, I think I know what that means. And I have this conceptualized idea inside my mind. And yet I end up not truly knowing. And I talked about that many weeks ago with, with the word faith. And I had this idea of what it meant. It's just this, this word, this like cloud word, you know, it's faith. Well, I grew up hearing about faith all my life, so it's faith, you know, and I, I would ascribe things to it, but it wouldn't really necessarily stick sometimes. It's just like, okay, this is one of those things I don't have to understand. I just got to believe it. I just got to put it out there, and I dug down deep into it, and we've looked at it many times, and, and that word means literally to be persuaded or confident. And so as we are looking at our, our walk with God, and I'm, I'm trying to dig in deep with him, and I'm having repentance, which means I'm changing the way I'm thinking, the way my purposes are. And as I do that, it's changing where I'm persuaded. And, and then where I think that, that I'm persuaded to believe that everything's going to turn out bad, the more I spend time with God and the more intimate relationship that I have with him, I'm now persuaded that he's able to do something more. And I, I may, I'm persuaded to say, hey, I don't have because I don't ask, so God, I'm going to ask and literally I'm going to drill down into that and say I'm going to change my confidence into you. So when I came upon this word believe, if you can put that back up there for me, when I came back to this word believe, I'm like, you know what? That's another one of those religious words. Hey, just believe. And I know what it means to believe. I mean, we all understand that definition. I mean, that's 101 in English and understanding but I wanted to see what it literally means here. And so I have the screens here. And again, I'm going to bore you with a little Greek. It literally, the word translated believe here is this word that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But look at this. It means to believe or entrust. Okay, so the word believe means to believe. That's not a rocket science, uh, right, you know, revelation right there. But look at what I highlighted. It's from 4102. So then if I click on that, I go to 4102. It's this other word that I'm not going to be able to say. But, oh, wait, this is that word we've been looking at. It means faith. It's where Jesus is saying, have the faith of God, have faith in God. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, uh, you go through all of this stuff. That's that same word. It's the same word that says, for I'm persuaded to you, death or life. No principalities, no power. It's that same word. But remember how we drill deep on this one? And what we look at word 3982, and 3982 means to be persuaded and to have confidence. So if we go back to that, that verse 24, it literally means it's based off the same word. And if you drill down, it keeps going all the way to the place of faith. When you pray and ask, Change where you're persuaded and your confidence is, and that's where your belief comes from. That confidence and being persuaded that you have received them, and then they will be granted to you. Last week, I got the opportunity to go with Jenny and some of the students from CFNI for the TNE 
um, Tuesday Night Experience Outreach, and they have that once a, a year, and it's an opportunity for them to go out with evangelism, and, and they've looked at evangelism all week long, and then they get the opportunity to go out there and just, hey, wherever God leads you. So we loaded up the truck, and we all went down there, and I'm just kind of like chaperoning and being with them. And, and the thing that I noticed is some people had a word that they believed God was telling them to look for someone, and the great things happened. But many others simply went out there and put a demand on the Spirit of God. Many others went out there and saw someone and said, hey, can I pray for you? Not because they had a word from God, but because they had an opportunity. And that opportunity led to the demand being placed on God, says, okay, God, I'm out here being obedient to you to talk to people, and now I'm asking you to intervene in their lives. What if the water didn't turn immediately to wine as we believe? That it was still nasty, rank water. Wastewater, essentially. And what would have happened if Mary had not put a demand on Jesus? They would have had the wah, wah, wah of the, of the wedding ceremony, and they would have been out of wine, and their everyone's um, failure to plan would have been exposed, and it would have been, oh, man, we're having such a good time, but now it's going. But no, that's not what happened. She put that demand on Jesus. What about the woman with the issue of blood? She put a demand on her faith and her confidence, and she was her, her being persuaded. She says, if I can just get through the crowd. She put a demand on her faith. And of course, we've been looking at that recently, that she actually was able to find her healing because she put a demand. Look at John chapter 4. Verse 46, therefore he, Jesus, came again to Cana of Galilee where he had made the water into wine. Wow, look at that. It's all tying in together. And there was a royal official, official whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Verse 48, so Jesus said to him, unless you see you people see signs and wonders. You simply will not believe. Jesus is saying, hey, unless you see these wow, like, ooh, ah, these wonderful things, you simply don't believe. And like, if it doesn't just overwhelm your senses, but then that word believe is literally the same one we just looked at. You're not persuaded. You don't have confidence. If you don't see something that really wows you, you don't have any confidence in God. Verse 49. Then the royal official said to him, Sir, come down before, come down before my child dies. Like, can you stop preaching for a minute, preachers? You just come heal my son. Verse 50. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed. He moved from being, hey, I need you, do you need you, need you, need you, need you, now to the spoken word that Jesus, as we talked about last week, the spoken word. He said, now, because Jesus spoke it, the man believed. And as he was going down, verse 51, his slaves met him saying that his son was living. And you continue on, to, he drilled down deep in this, say, okay, now when did this happen? Is this by coincidence? And he found out that at the exact time that Jesus said, go, your son is healed, was when his son was healed. And he became more of understanding and more persuaded and more confident in God as a result of what happened. If you will, please bow your heads with me. On this day, on this weekend, we honor the veterans who gave their life so that we all might enjoy freedom. Can I tell you what a great day for you to give your life to the one who gave his life so that you could have eternal life. You see, Jesus gave his life. He sacrificed his life, came down from heaven to pay for all of our sins so we didn't have to. I often say this, but it's not about joining this or any church. 
But it is about asking God to come into your life, to take God out of the box and say, God, I want you involved in my life. And that starts with a decision. And today I want to invite you to begin with that first step. If that's you this morning, I simply want you to say this prayer after me. Say, God in heaven, I want to begin a relationship with you. Thank you for Jesus paying for my sins so I don't have to. Today I accept Jesus as my Savior. I ask you to forgive all of my mistakes. I choose your life to the full. I surrender my will and everything to you, taking you out of the box. I ask you to lead me in your ways in the best way I know how. I'm going to live for you with all my heart. Today, I give you my life. Father, I pray for everyone who prayed that prayer for the very first time that they're making that first time connection with you or for the one who maybe has walked away and maybe someone's prayed this prayer a million times and maybe every time they hear a podcast, every time they hear a message from us or other people, they end up praying the prayer at the end. That's fine. Lord, I thank you that your patience and your mercy is there and your long suffering to be there with us and you don't get upset with us because we keep coming around that mountain. Father, I thank you for all the people who've served our country and all the countries. Lord, I know people are watching and listening from all different countries and and all the different countries have people in their armies who have served. Lord, we thank you for those who have served us. It's particularly those who have paid the ultimate price, the sacrifice of giving their life for their country. Lord, I pray that we're able to take the words of the stories from your life as we read through the Gospels Lord, that we're able to change and believe by being persuaded and having our confidence in you. It's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer with us, whether it's the first time or it's the second, third, fifth time, hundredth time, I want to invite you, and you'll see it at the bottom of your screen, to simply text the word NEXT to 469-289-1114. Text the word NEXT to 469-289-1114. That's our text communication um, ability that we can communicate with you. And for those who want to be a part of our financial solution and our financial runway, if you will, even, um, you can go to givetobelong.com. It's right there. Or an easier way is to text to give. Text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 469 469- 4107788. Well, if you will, let's just pray and be dismissed. Father God, I just thank you for everything you're doing here with Belong. Father, everything you're doing with those that are watching and listening, Father, and I thank you for the journey that we're taking, Lord, is, is we're challenging to everyone to get a plus one. Lord, that we'll all take this journey with someone else. And Lord, that we're better together. Father, I give you all the glory and all the honor. And we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.